Hey, it's Mark Podolsky at The Land Geek with your favorite niche real estate website, thelandgeek.com. And on today's podcast, I'm super excited for our guest because what good is making all this money and having all this wealth and having all this time if you don't have your health? So our guest is going to really help us learn more about that and also anti-aging. Why do we have to age? Why can't we all live to over 100, 110, 120? But before we talk to our guest, I'd be remiss if I didn't properly introduce my co-host. You know him. You love him. The brain, the professor, your flight school Sherpa, Scott Todd from scotttodd.net, landmodo.com. Learn anything about anything, investorninjas.com. Scott Todd, how are you? Mark, I'm great. How are you? I'm great. I'm, I'm going to feel healthier after this, this <laughs> interview. I can tell you that right now. Our guest today is Julian Hayes II. He is an epigenetic atelier, a human performance advisor, and an author. He has a boutique health and performance firm. And what he does is he helps entrepreneurs and executives recharge and upgrade their entire human system without the guesswork. And we're going to learn all about that. But essentially what he does is he upgrades the entire human system by leveraging your personal unique DNA. So it's not a a one size fits all data-driven health metrics and one-on-one personalized programming. And he's got all the high-tech toys that Scott Tyner are going to want to learn about as well as the performance team. Julian Hayes, welcome. That is an awesome introduction. Thank you so much for having me. Um, I'm, I'm pumped up. You got me pumped up. Well, great, great. Well, okay. Well, Julian, let's just rewind the tape a bit and let us know how did you get started with this um, really high performance um, boutique type of firm of, you know, not just get fit, but you know, the, the entire system essentially. Yeah. It, 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 it basically starts with just, I guess my life philosophy, which is to just constantly grow and evolve. So I definitely did not start with these aspirations um, to do this. I started with aspirations to become a doctor. So I ended up in medical school for a year. Um, while I was in New York, I kind of had these crazy synchronicities when I'm out and about in the city. One thing led to another. I decided not to go back. People think I'm crazy. That's whatever. And then, and, and so I started with just health and fitness, thinking about the physical body, because that's what I was used to. Let's, let's build some muscle. Let's watch what we eat and go from there. And then over time, as my father started to get a little sicker and sicker, and I started to look down my lineage, I started to notice that we always had the same kind of issues pop up generation after generation. And then I would go interrogate some of my other friends and, and see that they had certain issues that pop up that wasn't the same as my family. And I didn't believe in coincidences. So there had to be something there. So this leads me down a rabbit hole. I buy a lot of books, do a lot of research, start learning about genetics, epigenetics. I find a mentor who actually helps me structure this to actually make it useful, make it impactful, you know, learn how to read these different snips and everything. And then over time, as technology grows and I know different people, I just try different things on myself and I'd say on top of it, and then I start adding things to, in a nutshell, try to make the process as precise as possible. Because I think the new model of health is going to be health 2.0, and it's going to be much more personalized, truly personalized. And I'm just curious, and that's what drives me. Wow. Scott Todd, what are your thoughts? I mean, I'd like to learn more about it. Let's, let's keep going. All right. So first thing, Julian, what does epigenetic mean? Yeah, epigenetics. So the technical term epigenetics is just means above the gene. And an easy way to think about this that I always explain is that think about the hardware of a computer and then you have the software that's the inputs into that computer that depending on the software, that's going to dictate how that hardware is going to operate. So the hardware in this case is your human body, your system. And the information that you put in, whether it can be food, the types of foods you eat, exercising, sleep, your environment connection, how um, your finances, your mission, your loneliness, all these little factors influence the inputs that you're putting into your body. And then in a nutshell, what you're doing then is 
some genes are turning on, some genes are turning off. And you want some genes to be repressed, but you want some genes to express. So you're constantly evolving. And so it, it's a constantly evolving dynamic every day. But that's in a nutshell of how you can think about epigenetics. So you hear these people say, well, you know, we're, yeah, my family said this a lot. They're like, you know, weight just, we're just big bone in our family. You know, it, we don't lose weight in our family it runs in our genes. Well, that might be true. So I do have genes that leads to a higher propensity for things like weight gain, things like blood sugar issues. But the key word is propensity and it's a probability. So that just means if I don't stay on top of my lifestyle, that's one of the things that's most likely going to come first for me, but it's not an absolute. So you have to remember that, that your genes are not your destiny. It's clues to your past, but the epigenetics and what you do today can help mold your future. Scott Todd. I, mean, I do think, I do think that that's um, a lot of times we give ourselves passes, you know, when, exactly what you just said is we give ourselves passes. Oh, well, that's just the way my family is. I will tell you, like my, my dad, my dad was six, four, um, for most of my life, he weighed anywhere from, you know, 275 to 300 pounds, 300 plus. And, uh, you know, I always thought, okay, well, I'm going to be overweight too. I'll be heavy set, not overweight. You don't think of yourself overweight like that. You think of yourself as heavy set or big bone husky, the husky boy jeans back in the day. And you, you kind of give yourself a pass. Like, that's just who I am. Like, this is who I am. And, you know, I, I, I gave myself a pass for a very long time. And, um, when I got, when I got married, like, I'm surprised I even got uh, surprised I got married. I mean, I was, I was my heaviest mark ever. I weighed 245 pounds when I got married on my wedding day, 240. My wife had like lost this weight. Cause like, you know, pre jitter, pre wedding jitters, whatever it was, she lost weight. I'm like, I'm still eating, man. Like I'm eating 245. And then all of a sudden I realized like, this is not healthy. Okay. Like I realized this is not healthy. And from then on, I tried to like, okay, I got to pull this thing back. And I did it in, in layers, you know, as time went on, but I don't wait through 45 today. And in fact, you know, when I look around my own family, uh, my own family kind of has adopted that same mindset. And I think it's, I think it's a mindset thing more than, more than anything, but it's that willpower, right? Like if you have the will to, to change anything, including like your finances, well, you can change your health as well. It's just, you have to have the desire to do it. Absolutely. And, you know, I, I'm, I, I come from the opposite end, but I, I do, I do like remind people who are financially successful that the principles of being financially successful most definitely applies to fitness. And you're probably, you're going to see results even quicker in that realm than you would with finances. Cause it, you can only, you know, when you're investing, it's, you can only have that grow so fast. But in fitness, you can't exponentially change your life in six to 12 months. I mean, yeah, six to 12 months. So, so, Julian, what do you recommend for people that want to get more fit? Mm -hmm. And what I thought was really interesting was that you said you were looking at other things in their lives, like, you know, what are your relationships like? What, you know, how lonely are you? What are your finances like? Because it all plays a part in, in just your fitness overall. For example, if I'm lonely, I'm more likely going to watch, you know, Netflix and Money Heist mm -hmm. and just start eating a bunch of chips as opposed to, you know, maybe doing a workout. Kind of yeah. Thing. And, that, and I, I mentioned loneliness because also, you know, that creates inflammation in our body. There's been studies on this now that just this feeling of loneliness over time creates these feelings of inflammation and that lowers your immune system. And if you look at some of the world's oldest populations, they don't talk necessarily about things like keto, paleo diet and CrossFit training and high intensity workouts. Some of the things up there is to have a purpose, to have a mission, whatever, whichever word you want to use. It's also to have strong social connections. You know, and cause I think about this and to answer that question, um, the very first thing is to, and it might be counterintuitive, it's actually to take a step back and to slow down and then you can speed up. And what I mean by this is to really think about what does optimal health mean to you? Because I'm sure you guys hear this a lot. People want to be financially free and they probably can tell you what they're going to do when they're financially free, what this looks like and everything. But if you tell someone 
what does optimal health look like for you? What does it feel like? It's, it's harder. It's like, well, I just want to feel, I just want to feel good. I just want to feel healthy. And I think that sells him short because optimal health to me is going to be different than maybe you, but both of them are still going to be optimal. It's just different. You know, I, I like to really perform and push my body to the thresh, to the, to the limit. That doesn't mean the next person has to do that. So really getting clear on what optimal health is for them. So what body weight would you like to be at? What body fat? Like, how are you moving? How are you feeling? Who's with you? Really get descriptive in that, just like you're doing with your finances. Then after that, then you start crafting a plan out. You're thinking about nutrition and then thinking about exercising. And the reason why I do that is because I learned a long time ago. So when I first started working with people, I was a drill sergeant. I was very militant because I just trained everyone like me. So there's no empathy, really no compassion is you do it or not. I don't want to hear what's going on. Did you do it or not? That's it. And then I, you know, I got to learning that not everyone responds that way. And we have these things, which I first read about in Ray Dalio's book principles. We have these second, third and fourth order effects. So just like you mentioned with the Netflix, someone that's feeling lonely, most likely then are, is going to seek pleasure to try to compensate for this feeling of loneliness. And most people is they're going to eat their feelings and what they're going to eat is going to be something that's comforting. And by eating that food there is then going to lead to weight gain. So it's this whole cascading, like chain, like event. So that's why I say, start with, um, start with just really getting a clear picture on what optimal health is. And the last point, and then I'll stop is, um, talking about the reason why I talk about the missions and the purpose so much is because I thought about this. I thought about presidents. And if you look at a lot of presidents, they live a pretty long life and they have a super high stressful job. They come in with pretty nice black hair and they come out always gray. And sometimes their skin's a little, a little rough looking, but they live well into their nineties. And that's because generally when they leave their office, they have something else to fulfill their time. They have another purpose, whether it's humanitarian efforts or some sort of um, philanthropy or something. So for people, and I say that because we think about stress and that's going to be the first thing we got to get rid of stress. We got to get rid of stress. Not necessarily. Scott Todd. Mark, you and I were talking about this. uh, I don't know, two weeks ago, we were talking about how, um, you know, we we got a long way to go, right? You know, like you you and I in terms of age, uh, and we talked about. I was mentioning to you, like I don't think I'll ever retire in in this general sense. And I think I mentioned to you that there was a. I, I remember hearing about this study where the average CEO, when he retires, he lives a whopping like thirty seven months or something like that. That's the average. I, I could be wrong. I don't quote me on that number, but it's low. It's like three years somewhere in that range after a CEO retires. And, you know, you and I were talking about, well, why does that happen? Well, it happens because where's the purpose, right? You know, you, you retire and what are you going to do? Play golf? Well, your health is only going to go so long you can play golf. Maybe you can keep going, but what, what are you going to do? And, you know, I think that that's where kind of work or that purpose or that drive keeps you going. I don't think I ever want to retire in that sense. And the fact that, you know, I stop working doesn't mean I can't enjoy life. I mean, I think I do that today, but uh, you know, I think it's, I think it is important to have that purpose behind it too. Yeah. I mean, we, yeah, Julian, we talk about this all the time. I, I feel the exact same way. I, I never want to retire. And, um, you know, Scott and I kind of already are semi-retired. We really only do the things that we want to do for the most part. And even this podcast is just our way of, of connecting with other people and learning about new things. Like, I mean, could we do this at 110, Scott? Would it, would anyone would it even matter? Would we even care if anyone was even listening to our gravelly voices at that point? But for <laughs> you and I, it would still be interesting to meet new, interesting people and and learn and constantly sort of you know grow and get that that mentorship. So, Julian, what do you do? Like you're, I mean, if you're not watching this on video, Julian's a super thin, fit. Briber, vibrant, young looking guy. I don't know how old he is, but he looks really good. I'm 35. You're 35. Yeah. You look 25. So <laughs> what, what are you doing? Okay. Um, so let's see. So nutrition wise, let's start with nutrition. It's, um, it's actually not, I follow kind of a more, what you would say, a more Mediterranean based diet. 
in uh, eating style. So lots of different plants, um, lots of different fruits. A lot of my fruits are typically blueberries. I, um, my main animal source is fish. So it's going to be like mackerel, um, sardines, salmon. Um, I like catfish still. And, and it's a high omega-3 diet as well. Cause so my genes is, um, I need a little extra omega-3 support. So that's one reason why I'm cognizant of that as well. I don't eat as much red meat just cause my genes don't tolerate it as well. So I probably eat red meat maybe once or twice a month. And then, um, sweet potatoes, rice, um, but definitely like vegetables is at the forefront of that. So I eat a lot, but then I still always have a lot of vegetables as well. And so, um, then let's see with the working out, it kind of depends on what mode I'm in. So I'm currently training two times a day. Now, um, I have a marathon. I just, I got into distance running during the pandemic. Um, what a guy that was, I think he's about 70 or he's almost 70. And he has to VO two max of like a 35 year old and he's like running and everything. And he kind of challenged me. And when I get challenged, I kind of go all in. He's like, you, you should be doing more cardio instead of just lifting weights and, and stuff. And so I was like, okay. And my genes say, I don't have like great endurance genetics. So that was even more of a challenge and excitement for me to do. So I've been running a lot more. I still lift weights probably four times a week and then run, but I've been doing two a days now. It's an intense training period. So I sleep, I sleep recoveries big for me as well. So I typically listen to lectures or podcasts while I'm doing some stretching in the evening time to kind of relax and to get, cause I'm normally, I'm, I typically can get high strung, a little amped up. And so, and if I don't control that at night, I'm just going to be looking up at the wall when I'm trying to sleep. So it's essential for me to kind of wind down with stretching and meditating at nighttime. And so I do sleep probably seven and a half to eight and a half, nine hours sometimes. And, um, supplements it's, it's all, it's all over the place. It just depends on what the focus of the, the training period is. But I would say for people, if you're thinking about supplements, cause a lot of, that's a common question that people ask. I like to think of supplements as something that's just, they, they're beneficial only if you have the foundation intact. So if you have a very poor diet at the moment, the supplements are not going to be as effective. So for me, something like vitamin D, I th well, I th vitamin D is very important. So I take a vitamin D supplement. I have a multi-mineral just to cover those bases. And then I have a vitamin C and I kind of forgot what else. And, but it's very specific. So like my whole regimen is, is tailored to kind of what my genetics indicates and then also what my lab reports showed as well. So that's why it's, it's very biospecific. And then over the course of the year, it may change depending on what my needs and everything are. But other than that, that's, that's it. So it's not too, it's pretty lifestyle friendly. I used, there used to be a point where I used to be like very militant about like counting out measure, weighing my chicken breast, counting my sticks of broccoli. But that's some of my friends. They're, they're, they, they're, they do competition. So if I want to go out and have a glass of wine or, and have the bread, I, I don't have a problem eating that. So I'm not that nutritionally anal these days. No, no that's great. But I, I thought it was interesting given how fit you are that you didn't start off with a, a chocolate donut, a crispy cream no, chocolate no. donut like, you, like you, Scott you know, Todd. The difference is, I mean, it just, it catches up with me when I'm running. So if I was just lifting weights, I probably would still sneak in some more foods like that, but it sits, it sits me when I'm running and I, I feel heavy. <laughs> so I, I can't, I can't do it. So I have to be, I have to be very cognizant of, of that when I'm, you know, like, cause I'll start to feel it around like mile 15 and I was like, Oh my goodness, this, this feels terrible. Scott Todd. Listen, you, you, you eat what you want to eat. That's the part of life, right? Yeah, you know, that's like, right. Look, I mean, I'm a, I'm a cookie guy and pastries. I love cookies and pastries. So I, I have to keep those away. If somebody really wants to get on my good side, send me some fresh, freshly baked, um, white chocolate macadamia nut cookies. Well, I mean, Mark, okay. So I mean, yeah, go ahead. Mark, like if, 
I, I would say, look the the whole donut thing, man. Like, it, <laughs> I would say that okay, is it the best thing that I could eat? Probably not, right? Mm-hmm. Like, and will I forever eat that? I hope that I can eat that forever, and then I mean, like, enjoy, right? Like, that's that's what it's about. Now, if I was if I had no willpower and I decided to to buy a six pack of donuts and eat all six of them for breakfast, maybe that's not a good thing. But if I have one, if I give myself permission to have one and enjoy life, so be it. No see, problem with it. Uh, see, I admire you have great control and moderation. I yeah. don't have that. So um, I, I cannot eat just one cookie. So I will eat them all because my appetite's like crazy. So I, I think that's good. And the, the way I think about this is because I, I think a lot of people do think that if they need to be healthy, they have to become like this ultrally militant, strict person. I like to think of about a ratio. If you're batting, you know, if your ratio is 85, 15, 90, 10, you're going to, you're going to most definitely be very healthy and probably have your goal. You know, if you're eating healthy 85% of the time, 90% of the time, and what, and say you eat three times a day. And so, 24 of those meals are good. I mean, you look at the big picture, you look at the big macro thing. So that one donut, you, you know, enjoy your donut. <laughs> Thank you. And, and Mark, notice that we have the macros come up, not only here on this podcast, but also Taria says, hey, follow the macros. So therefore, right. I think the donut is a moot point. We should never discuss it again. Fine, fine. So, so Julian, what I've been doing, and I don't know if you agree with this or not, it might be just, I have to look at my genetics, is I've been intermittent fasting. Oh, yeah. So I, I do a 16-8, mm-hmm. um, five days a week. And I've eliminated caffeine, alcohol, and sugar unless I'm on vacation. And it's like, there's a crazy patisserie in San Francisco that I absolutely love. Then I'll be like you and I go crazy. Mm-hmm. But for the most part, I just, it's either just like none, um, just eliminated. So just, it's just one less thing I have to think about. And I don't have to be like Scott and, and self discipline. Now, what's interesting socially, it can be tough because I'll have friends, hey, let's go get a drink. I'm like, well, I don't drink. Or, you know, with the kids, hey, let's go get some ice cream and, you know, I'll, I'll just watch them have ice cream. So, um, kind of thing, but you know, my kids are older, so it's not like that big a deal, but you know what I'm saying? So what are your thoughts on that? I like intermittent fasting. You know, I think intermittent, I think that 16, eight schedule is a great lifestyle. It's it's a great lifestyle strategy to have. I think it's the deep, it's a great default when you go to mine is more of a, I'm typically a 12, 12 or 14, 10, just because I have to get more food in throughout the day. So that's why I I've expanded my window out, but, but I still always follow the rule of before I go to bed, like no meals, at least three hours before bed and my sleep's a lot better. And my um, wearables have indicated that as well. I get more quality sleep. So I like that rule and same thing. Oh man, caffeine. I, I limit myself to one cup of coffee a day because I, I do process caffeine a little slower. So it stays in my system longer, but, um, it's really good coffee or I should say coffee, you know, coffee is good, but, um, but I, I think that's it. I think that's a great plan that you got. Um, so I think you're, you know, I, I think, I think the fasting is good. Not because I, yes, there's benefits for fasting, but I think what it does is it gives you constraints and it gives you guidelines and structure. And I think that's really so important when it comes to our health is to give ourselves some constraints and, and structure. And, you know, you hear people talk about constraints when it comes to creativity. I think Dr. Seuss's one of his books, it was, I think he only could use so many different words and letters for that book. And so he had constraints. And, and so I think that's benefit as well in our health. Okay. Last question before we get to the tip of the week, what do you think is normal what other, but other people say that's absolutely crazy, Julian. Um, what do I think that's normal that everybody else? Well, everything is kind of, everything's a competition. Everything's a competition. 
everything's a competition. Yeah. I, I, um, everything's kind of a competition. Yeah. I, I think that's just what's really been on my mind lately is just that everything's a competition. Maybe it's not against anyone, but it's against yourself. And so I just kind of think about that because one of my friends actually yesterday, they were saying, do you just do things just to, just to do it? I was like, you know what? I don't, you know, it's, it's a competition. I'm, I'm always trying to get better. That's like my, like my ethos is to constantly get better and to try to squeeze the most I can out of this life here. So it's a competition. Okay. I love it. Well, we're at that point, Julian, and I think your mentorship has been great, but we're going to ask you for one more tip of the week, a website, a resource, a book, something else actionable for the auto passing income listeners to go improve their businesses, improve their lives. What have you got? This might be a little different. I'm going to say, go to Spotify <laughs> and find you some, a good playlist set, create you a few good playlists of whatever type of music you like that really gets you in the flow state and really gets your emotions uh, in a positive state. And the reason why I say that is there's a lot of distractions in the world right now, and that can really affect our emotional and our mental state, which can then affect our physical state. So let's use music as a benefit to, and cause we we're going to sit at our desk. We're going to work. Let's have something positive on. All right. I love it. And Scott, Todd, before we get to your tip of the week, I just want to mention our sponsor, which is flight school. Learn how the next 16 weeks can literally transform your life. Go up that mountain of land investing quickly, safely, efficiently with Scott Todd as your Sherpa. In fact, that tuition for flight school is not going to cost you anything. We guarantee it. You're going to make back that money 180 days or less in cash or terms deals. Learn more, go to landgeek.com forward slash training and schedule a call. Scott Todd, what's your tip of the week? Mark, there's always uh, some pretty cool trans uh, trans uh, transcription services available, you know, using AI or whatever. Check out this one. It, you know, like this would be good for uh, talking talking uh, to your computer, recording maybe either an email or um, you know, kind of a a um, a process that you you want to have documented or something. And if you go to speechtext.ai, it allows you to get a uh, Chrome plugin that will allow you to do transcriptions right from your plug, uh, right from your browser. You can upload files, you can record right there from your browser and send it in. I don't know, it's pretty cool. Pretty cool. All right, yeah. speechtext.ai. That is pretty cool. Um, let's see what this costs. Not like bad. Ten bucks a month. Ten bucks a month for 180 transcription minutes. Yeah. 19 bucks for 380. 30 plus languages. Huh. Not bad. Well, as good as your tips are, guys, only my tip is going to make you live longer, healthier, better <laughs> life. Go to the art of fitness and life.com. We'll have a link to that website, the art of fitness and life.com. Learn more about uh, what Julian is doing how he can improve your life. He's got a podcast and blog. He's got the superhuman insider. I want to become a superhuman. I want to live to be 120. Um, but I've been thinking about this. I don't know. I don't think I want to outlive Scott Todd. That would be miserable. Scott, can we coordinate this? <laughs> oh, Mark. Oh, Mark. I don't know, man. You're pretty healthy, though. I don't have to worry about it. Uh, we'll see. We'll see. All right. He's gonna be um, eating, he's gonna be eating donuts. He's gonna be eating that that daily donut at 120, and so he's gonna get interviewed by the news station. You know how we always yeah do those random interviews. It's like, what's your secret? She's like, well, I I always had a glass of scotch every day, and so he's Scott's gonna be on there saying, I had this daily donut, and I've been doing it for the last 60 years. Oh yeah, yeah, and and uh, that's when my sponsorship dollars blow up. <laughs> Exactly. I'm playing the he, long game here, man. He's me like the uh, the Jared of Krispy Kreme without, of uh, course, the jail. Yeah, without the without the, the jail sentence. Without prison. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> without, without making bad choices. Um, <laughs> all right, Julian, are we good? We're good. This has been awesome. I, I it's been highly enjoyable. Fantastic, Scott Todd. Are we good? We're good, Mark. Well, I want to thank the listeners and remind them: look, the only way, the only way we're getting the quality of guests like a Julian Hayes 
If you, if you do us three little favors, follow us, rate, review the podcast, send a screenshot of that review to support at thelandgeek.com. I'm going to send you a signed copy of Dirt Rich as a thank you. So please do it. Um, it's the only way we're going to get uh, quality guests. So we all benefit from it. Follow, rate, review. All right, let's do this. One, two, three. Let, let freedom, freedom ring. ring. All right. Julian's like, huh, didn't see that coming. All right. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Thanks for listening to the Art of Passive Income podcast. Start your journey at www.thelandgeek.com and www.scotttaub.net. Read and review the podcast and email support at thelandgeek.com. Your screenshot for a free passive income launch kit.